Hi, I'm Lou James, the founder of Pink and Steel International, and I'm really passionate about helping people live as fully and actively as possible after a cancer diagnosis. And I think the evidence for the, for the benefits of rehabilitation and exercise is very encouraging, and I think we need to work together as health professionals in this area of care to extend the scope of our care to support more people in need. And one of the things I've learned working in this field and teaching physiotherapists is that people need support through many stages of their treatment and recovery and to cope with the ongoing challenges of life after cancer treatment. I don't believe it's enough to just treat the scar or just treat range of motion issues. I think we need to look at the well-being of the whole patient and to make sure we're helping them to reach their potential to live as actively and fully as possible. So I'm going to talk today about extending the scope of physiotherapy care to reduce the burden of cancer for our patients and to show how evaluation data from two examples of different programs. So as you know, cancer patients are at risk of experiencing adverse physical and psychosocial consequences of their cancer and its treatment. With an increasing number of patients treated for and living with cancer, these consequences can leave a gruelling physical and mental legacy for many years. And this can wreak havoc with people's body confidence, their strength, stamina, and their life plans, the absence of children, the ability to work full time, and achieve other life goals. So as Julia Rowland has said, being disease free does not necessarily mean being free of your disease. Cancer is a chronic disease. People are either living with cancer or living with the side effects of cancer. So deconditioning is one of the most prevalent cancer-related treatment complications and the musculoskeletal, respiratory, and cardiovascular systems are all affected by cancer-related deconditioning and can cause serious complications if not managed. And it doesn't take long for the cycle of deconditioning with physical activity from cancer treatments to lead to further inactivity and increase the potential for disability. So deconditioning can also lead to a negative spiral for women's mental health after cancer as well, which can include decreased sense of well-being, a sense of helplessness, and they are less likely to ask for help and connect with exercise programs in the community. So I cannot be stressed enough how important physical activity is to cancer patients. It needs to be understood that while surviving cancer itself is a really difficult journey, suffering from additional Complications related to inactivity can make recovery more difficult, can affect cancer survival itself, and can lead to serious lifelong complications. So this slide shows the Pink and Steel tiered program of appropriate care. And this approach to rehab is a tiered approach designed to work with a patient from early stages through to the well recovered. And the tiered approach also supports cancer patients who come to rehab sometime after their initial intervention. So individual programming is very important initially for women with breast cancer, but the recommended and partially funded series of five or 10 individual sessions typically needs to flow into further supportive programming. So the next tier, tier two of interventions, is small group exercise programs. And Pink and Steel have developed a stand-up paddleboarding program and a Pilates yoga and cardio-based program, which we call Next Steps. After completion of one or both of these programs, women are then encouraged to get involved in community events. And we see examples of women with breast cancer going through this tiered program and then joining into our Move Over Cancer fundraising events to support other cancer uh, di people diagnosed. So it is so rewarding to be involved in all these phases of the program, to see women getting back to doing the things that they love and helping others to come after them. So our Pink and Steel Cancer Rehab uh, programs are, are all individualised physio programs, but today I'm going to talk to you more about Tier 2 and how physios can extend their support in the group setting. So this next program is called the Next Steps Program, and it was designed following discussions I had with the New Zealand Breast Cancer Foundation, who were looking for a nationwide exercise program to support women after breast cancer. It is a combination of Pilates, yoga, and cardio exercises, and we're using a step up so we could cater for different levels within the group setting. And this photo is a group of physios that were um, learning to do the training program. We also used a word of the week, which uh, which, we, which concepts taken from positive psychology programs for well-being. So the women were given a word such as gratitude or energised and encouraged to spend some time um, each day completing an activity that would support their sense of well-being. 
and only physiotherapists that were trained in oncology rehab were selected to be trained to pilot the 10-week um, program from their clinics. It was really important to know whether the program was going to meet its aims of supporting health and fitness and well-being goals and to see if it was actually feasible that it would be an attractive rehab option for women. So 11 physiotherapy clinics took part uh, and 87 women with breast cancer completed both the surveys. The remaining women had other types of cancer, but the data that I'll present today is just on the woman that had breast cancer. The mean age was 55, and over 70% attended eight to 10 sessions. This slide shows the range of treatments represented in the group that we saw. This graph shows participant responses that were true or very true to the statements below. All responses were extremely positive with 94% saying that they loved the whole course and almost all of them saying that they would recommend it to a friend. 80% said that it made them more interested in getting fit. The results for wellbeing indicators were dramatic with a large decrease in those reporting problems with fatigue, body confidence and general confidence. There were less spectacular but still significant reductions in reports of feeling down and sleep difficulties. Serious fatigue problems reduced from 63 to 23%, and the feeling of being less confident about my body reduced from 55 to 21%. So using questions from QLQ30, we investigated aspects of daily functioning, and as you can see, these measures showed a general trend of decreases. Strongly indicated responses are, report, are reported very much so, decreased significantly for limitations in leisure activities, the feeling tired and weak, and the need to rest. But what I really want to draw your attention to in these results are firstly the significant reductions in reported feeling tense, worried, and irritable. These effective aspects of well-being are likely to have a really profound effect on how you feel about life, the universe, and everything. So these results were really interesting. However, the biggest change on all of the measures we assessed was memory difficulties, which went from a 38% reporting that they, that they very much had a memory problem to 12.5%. So that's a two thirds reduction in, in memory problems. So in summary then, participants really enjoyed the Next Steps program. They reported overall improved health and wellbeing and improved specific measures of health and fitness. The biggest reported changes were in reduction in reported memory and fatigue problems, but confidence, body confidence, and sometimes feeling down anxiety, worry, and irritability also showed significant decrease. So many of the women are still exercising and have now joined our tier three activities. And the New Zealand Breast Cancer Foundation is now funding this program nationwide across New Zealand for all breast cancer patients. Uh, we've now trained more physiotherapists to run the program in their clinics and are hoping to introduce it to Australia next year. And I've really been overwhelmed with a physiotherapist's response to taking the program. They love taking the program, and many of them have also told me that they've actually seen health benefits themselves from doing the Pilates and the yoga and the step ups. So, I'm now going to present evaluation data gathered from a pilot stand up paddleboarding program. And this was developed to meet the exercise need needs for breast cancer patients following their initial surgery and treatment. So, participants were screened by a pink, uh, cancer rehab physio prior to enrolment to ensure that they were well and strong enough with adequate balance to do the program. The Paddle On program is divided into eight modules, so each with a specific rehab and learning focus. So there's balance and posture, there was shoulder and thoracic flexibility, core stability, uh, shoulder strengthening and stability, uh, arm strength and turnover, dynamic balance and turns, and cardiovascular fitness and endurance. So all those concepts were, were put into the eight modules. Um, the pilot program was run in seven different groups with a maximum of 10 per group. And we used four different locations, which were chosen because of the calm water with no significant um, currents, et cetera. So this figure, uh, this graph here shows the positive changes that were noted in the series of questions relating specifically to the benefits anticipated from the Pavlon program. And prompted by the question, thinking about my health now, I would like to, so with more percentages decreasing, indicating improvement with respect to feeling stronger, improving balance, spending more time outside, being able to feel more relaxed, and receiving more support from people who understand breast cancer. This next 
um, shows improvements in psychological well-being, and they were also recorded with a significant decrease after paddle on in the percentage of participants reporting having problems with fatigue, feeling less confident about their bodies, feeling less confident in general, and feeling down and having difficulty sleeping. Um, the questions re relating specifically to how participants felt about aspects of paddleboarding showed that 91% chose very true or true for the statement, I love the whole course. 98% for I learned a lot of new skills. 96% for I would recommend this course to a friend. 84% I would like to do more paddleboarding. 81% I enjoyed the social support of the group. 82% being on the water allowed me to unwind. Um, and 70% um, for Padlong was has made them more interested in getting fit, which is fantastic. So the Padlong pilot program was reported by the participants to be a very positive experience with a high completion rate, which appears to be related to the enjoyment of learning new skills and experiencing new challenges in comparison with some other reported outcomes of exercise programs that have had poor compliance. The amount of weekly exercise under taken by participants increased overall and 41% reported weight loss, which is potentially a valuable health change as 52% reported a weight increase since their cancer diagnosis. And elsewhere, this has been linked to an increased risk of cancer occurrence. So the main change in quality of life measures were an improvement in mood, strength and memory, and a decrease in tiredness, which is in accordance with previous reports on exercise and cancer patients from elsewhere. And here is one of the quotes from, from our participants. And they, they really, the participants were often were really quite nervous when they first started this program, but by getting out onto the water, having other people of similar abilities around them, learning new skills, it was just amazing to, um, to see their confidence grow, but also often to get them up exercising in the morning. So a lot of them ended up starting to go for walks in the morning and doing other things as well as the paddleboarding. So a positive outcome of the paddleboarding program appears to not only be the reported increase in strength and balance and flexibility, but also the psychological aspects such as increased confidence and overall quality of life and the reduction in tiredness and fatigue. So the positive outlook that women had at the end of the program resulted in a high percentage reporting that paddle on had made them more interested in getting fit, which I think is fantastic. And this in an eight week program, you know, these results in an eight week program is a, is a wide lot of outcomes. And I think it's really encouraging for continuing the program and supporting women in their well-being after breast cancer. So the paddle on program is now funded in New Zealand and we run, it's run through a number of regions through pink and steel physios that run it. Um, together with certified paddleboard instructors. And now we've now actually opened the program to men and women of all different types um, of cancers. So one of the highlights for me is how much the physios also love this paddleboarding program and, and teaching it outside and just getting outside their clinics and, and seeing people move and gain in confidence. I think this is a really rewarding process to be for a physio or any other allied health professional as well. So in summary, the next steps in paddle on programs give physiotherapists working in cancer rehab a chance to walk the talk, extend their skills range, increase job satisfaction, and improve outcomes for their patients. And it is also beneficial for their own health. And I think working together as health professionals and extending the scope of our services will ensure that we help more people to reach their potential to live as fully and actively as possible. If you have any questions about my presentation, you can contact me. Um, the details are on the slide here. Thank you very much.